Hi, and welcome back to Psychology Class with me, Mr. Snyder. And today we are going to finish talking about uh, how people learn. And we'll talk about cognitive factors that go on in learning, not just behavioral factors. Learning targets for today. We will describe different kinds of learning, such as latent learning. Latent learning. We will analyze situations in which observational learning takes place, most notably the media and adults watching children. Sorry, children watching adults. And lastly, we will identify which learning principles are involved in behavior modification. Latent learning is something that you learn but it remains hidden until it is needed. And cognitive psychologists are really interested in this. Cognitive psychologists study thinking processes and what's going on in your mind. They're interested to know uh, what people and animals know, not just what they do. Because I know more than what I do. Like what I do is not the only things that I know. I know a lot more. Um, for example, latent learning you know the, lay the layout of CHS as a junior or a senior even without reinforcement and that you use that knowledge when it is needed. So if I ask someone to go to the science room, they can make their way down to the science room. You know the layout of CHS better today than you did when uh, you first started as a sophomore. And it, reinforcement wasn't needed unless you consider getting to class on time reinforcement or punishment. But um, most psychologists think that most learning takes place without the concept of reinforcement. Like rats, even if there's no cheese at the end of the maze, they'll still walk around and smell and learn about their environments. There's nothing stopping them from doing that. And there's no reinforcement for doing that. They're just curious. Observational learning is knowledge and skills that are acquired by observing and or imitating others and famed psychologist Albert Bandura has shown that we acquire knowledge by observing and imitating others. Take a look at his Bobo the doll experiment. The uh, model pummeled the doll with the mallet, flung it in the air, kicked it repeatedly, threw it down and beat it. It was once widely believed that seeing others vent aggression would drain the viewer's aggressive drive. As you can see, exposure to aggressive modeling is hardly cathartic. Exposure to aggressive modeling increased attraction to guns, even though it was never modeled. Guns had less appeal to children who had no exposure to the aggressive modeling. The children also picked up the novel hostile language. Modeling is when a person observes a behavior and is later able to reproduce it. And then the term vicarious reinforcement is the ability to learn from the experiences of others. Um, observational learning and modeling account for the most of human learning. And you learn this as a kid. Kids learn to speak, eat, play by observing what their parents and others do. An example of observational learning is media violence and its effects. Media being television, movies, video games, music, etc. Television is a major source of informal observational learning. Just think if we didn't have television, how much observational learning you would actually do. You'd just be limited to what you saw in your everyday life. Now television, and even more so on the internet, can transform, transport you to areas of the globe that you, would never, you will never be able to visit, hopefully.
maybe you won't be able to visit them. And most health professionals and psychologists agree that media violence contributes to aggression. There are correlations there. Does it cause it? Probably not. Does it contribute to it? Most health professionals agree, yes. Look at these statistics. 74% of school-age children, so 5 to 18, who own video game equipment play an average of 53 minutes a day. Average. That could be a lot. Some of you are going, oh, that's, that's on a bad day, you know, as if I have a lot of homework. 89% of video games played contain some kind of violence. 17% uh, of video games where violence is the primary focus, you know, Call of Duty, etc. And 13 to 22 percent is the estimated increase in violent behavior of adolescents due to playing violent video games. And so video games in the last um, 20 years, 25 years, have really upped the amount of violence that adolescents are exposed to. Prior to that, they weren't exposed to a lot. Now, they can take part in violence and shooting. And a lot of people think that is why... Uh, there are increased violent behavior in adolescence. Now, lastly, behavior modification um, in classroom discipline, in the classroom, in teacher college, teacher school, we are taught to pay attention to the students that are behaving appropriately, providing positive reinforcement, and ignoring the misbehavior that is not harmful to themselves or others. So if it's just the kid goofing off, we're supposed to redirect them back onto task and not really worry about them, not reward or give them attention more than necessary for what they're doing. Um, and that should modify their behavior. If they want attention, they're going to have to act in an appropriate way to get it. Token economies. Maybe you had some of these in middle school. I know I did. Um, people are actually paid to act correctly by earning rewards, and those can be cashed in for treats, merchandise, privileges. This is um, in the picture. This is an autistic boy, a boy with autism, who actually um, is very proud that he was able to behave in an appropriate way and get his little poker chips, and now he can cash those in for a uh, reward. And so that works to modify behavior. Also, personal contracts. It identifies a behavior you want to change or prevent sets a goal for the new behavior and creates a system of rewards or punishments that encourage the new behavior. So um, when I turned 16 and driving age, my parents um, presented a personal contract to me about drinking and driving. You know, they said, if you're in a situation where you even you haven't been drinking and you would like to get home, um, please come and call us and we will pick you up and get you there, no questions asked. They are trying to prevent the very dangerous behavior of drinking and driving. Now, of course, they knew I didn't drink or take in, in uh, part in those behaviors, but they, if I was in the situation where it was happening, they wanted me to be safe and able to get home, no questions asked. So that is preventing the goal of drinking and driving, setting up a system for it, etc. And that's all I have for you today. So please go ahead and fill out those learning targets and I'll see you in class tomorrow. Chapter six quiz is coming up. Goodbye.